Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm going to let you guys get into the... What's going on, everybody? I'm going to give you some time to get into the room. Definitely feel free to share this this periscope, man. I had to pull over to the side of the road to be able to encourage you guys about worrying. Um, so I'm going to give you guys some chance, some time to go ahead and get the hearts going, to go ahead and invite some more people to the periscope. Share on your Twitter. Share on your Facebook. Share on your Instagram. Um, I feel like I have just something to say. I just want to kind of get off my chest um, because I believe... Um, that that God can do anything. Uh, like the title says, worrying is an offense. It's offensive to a God who can do anything. Always encourage people, man, that the universe is still being held on let there be. It's so sad that the chair that you're sitting in right now, wherever you're laying at right now, wherever you're watching this periscope, you didn't check to see if that chair can hold you. You didn't check to see if, if that bed was sturdy enough because you believed that it was able to hold you. It's so sad that we'll check all these different things to see if well, it's so sad that we won't check all these different things to sustain us. But anytime we walk by faith, anytime that we put our trust in anything in God, we want to check to make sure that he's able. And I tell people the best way to overcome the challenge that you're facing now is to see how faithful God was in your past. I know that you're going through some things right now. I know you're worried. I know that there you're going through pressures like you've never seen before. But I, I guarantee you. If you strengthen your faith in God, if you increase your time with him, if you look at the universe, if you look at the, uh, the, the skylines, if not skylines, if you look at the clouds, the sun, the moon, the stars, the animals, these entities are not worrying about whether or not they're going to be taken care of. But aren't you greater than them? I know right now you're probably laying down and you probably got financial pressures. You probably got ministry pressures, you know what I'm saying, business pressures, whatever it is, family relationship pressures. But I'm telling you, when you worry, you're letting God know that he's not capable. God is capable. The reasons why we worry, the re one of the reasons why we worry is because we believe that we can handle our own lives. The moment that you lose control of your life is the moment that your life becomes controlled or stable. Once you give your life to God, and you let God control your life and you let your life go. Now, be a good steward of what God placed in your life. But the things that you cannot control, you got to place it into God's hands. Tonight, I want to encourage you. Tonight, I want to coach you. I will, tonight, I want to motivate you to say whatever that thing is that you're worrying about. Whatever that thing that's pressed on your heart right now. Whatever that thing that you're allowing to be a burden on your life. Cast that care on God tonight. Because why worry? The birds don't have to worry about what they eat. All the different things in this universe don't have to worry about what God said thousands of years ago that let there be. If God said let there be something in your life, if God told you something, if God said I'm going to bring you through it, trust him. The sad thing is we don't trust this God. I, I posted a quote earlier this week. Uh, earlier, I think it was yesterday. Don't let your faith be blinded by your sight. Don't let your faith be blinded by what you see. I promise you, when I have kids, I'm going to teach them how to walk by faith and not by sight. It's nothing wrong with seeing what you see. But God has a peripheral view of your life right now. What you see right now, this giant that's in front of you right now, whatever that you're facing right now, yes, you can see it. And yes, it's right there in your face. But God sees beyond it. God sees beyond the corner. God says, trust the one who's driving your life. Trust the one that's controlling your life. Trust the one who gave you air in your lungs. The Bible says in him that we live, move, and have our being. If you could trust God for the air you breathe, trust me, you could trust God for the next stage of your life. Listen, man, I've been without a car for about six or seven years. Uh, and now I'm sitting in a brand new Durango. I used to ask God, God, why did you have me walk so much? Why? I began to worry about, you know, all these different things. And God said, man, I let you walk just for you to see, to be able to see what it's like not to have a car. And many people right now are going through tough times right now asking God, where are you? And God say, I placed you here for a reason so that you can be able to go through certain things so that you can relate to somebody else that may worry. So when I know how to walk in the heat and I know how to walk 30 minutes in the sun and I know what it feels like to be in my and, and to work eight hours a day after walking 30 minutes to get a car. When, it, when I know what it's like to sit amongst the people on the buses and all that kind of stuff, I can be able to relate. Pain helps you relate. Going through things helps you relate. Don't worry about where you at right now. God knows where he planted you. 
God knows exactly where you are right now. You do not have to worry about a thing. You can trust him. Do not grow up experiencing the faithfulness of God at first hand and grew up by faith. Oh, thank you for that. Thank you for that. I'm getting used to these comments posting up. But I'm telling you, in this day and age, in this new America, in this new world that we live in, you better know how to walk by faith. You better know how to walk by faith knowing that God will bless your next meal. It's getting to those times where we're going to have to know how to walk by faith. You got to know how to walk by faith and not by sight because the persecution in America is not going to be based upon beheading people. Persecution is going to hit your pockets first. Persecution is going to hit your lips first. Persecution is going to hit yo, the things that you love more than you love God. But if you love God more than anything, they can take whatever you have right now. You will not budge because your faith is in a God who can see beyond. And I don't care about, I'm not getting so consumed about martyrdom. I'm not trying to say this, I want to get my head cut off. But what I'm trying to say is, is that in this new world, if I walk by faith and not by sight, and I trust God at every step of the way, I know for a fact, even until my death, I know I'm secure. Because what is death? Death is only six minutes <laughs> max. Compared to eternal, the Bible says, why fear the man who can only kill the body? You better fear the one that can put your body and soul in hell. And God said, I'm not sitting there for you to trust me out of, out of, out of fear. I want you to trust me because I'm able. God is able. Do you believe him? Do you trust him? Man, right now I'm going through a test in my life, man. One of my biggest faith fights, you know. And I have two options, either to worry or to trust. You know what happens when a person worries and God comes through? You become embarrassed. I've been embarrassed so many times when worrying and then God comes through. And I'm the one embarrassing God looking at me like, bro, did I not tell you I'm God? Did I not tell you I'm going to come through? He is going to come through if you in his will, if you're living according to his will, if you in love with him, he's going to come through. And yes, you're going through tough things right now, but tough things make tough people. Listen, if you was brought up with a spoon in your mouth, silver spoon in your mouth, if you was brought up with all kind of money. You won't know how to relate to nobody because everybody goes through pain. Do you trust him? I think that's all I have for me, man. I mean, I just wanted to encourage you guys today. I know there's some people I felt you in my heart. That you out there, you know, kind of worrying about some things, man. I just want to encourage you. But I'm going to pray for you. Father God, I pray for each person that's watching this periscope, watching on YouTube, wherever they're watching. I pray, Father God, they begin to trust you and lean not on their own understandings, but in all their ways acknowledge you. I pray right now that the peace of God which surpass all understanding will keep their hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Father God, let them not worry about a thing. Father God, when they find their hearts worrying, let them de dig their roots deep into their relationship with you, knowing that if the universe is still held on, let there be that surely your life, that their life is still hung in your heart, Father God, because what you did on the cross for them set them free from worry. And I pray for them, Father, in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, man. So if you have any questions, I got about five minutes. I don't want these people at McDonald's looking at me crazy, but I had to get their free Wi-Fi. Because I, I said before I go home, I have to encourage you, man. So any questions about worrying, about whatever, man. I'm here to, about another five minutes to cut this air conditioner on, getting kind of warm. You know how it is when you preach. Any question? That was on what now? Oh, that was on time. Oh, thank you, dancer underscore 4JC. Keep them hearts going, man. So more people can see this feed. Keep them hearts going. Get about 1,000, 2,000 more of those hearts, man. Any other questions before I go? Guys, you talked about it at church? Yeah, man, we live in a day and age where every believer is going to be tested. Everybody's going to be tested. The separation has been made from the wheat and the tares. The separation has been made from believers and non-believers. And either, you, either your faith is going to be proven in your trust in God or not. Will there be a session at the new location on oh, October 1st? Oh yeah, we'll be having a, we'll be having every Thursday after October first. Yeah, man, I can't wait to post those videos in, in October. And y'all go out there and support Unplugged, man. We're looking to raise some money. Uh, we're developing youth mentoring programs. Go to imunplugged.com. Uh, we're looking for a hundred or so people to give twenty five dollars a month. Uh, looking for some people to give five hundred dollars one time um, to help us get these mentoring programs going to help our adult coaching 
and the youth mentoring program. So any more questions before I go? Thoughts on contentment? Yeah, man. I, I always say this. Happiness is based upon conditions. Joy is based upon no conditions. And being able, when you have a full awareness of why you're in the place that you're at. Let me cut this area down kind of loud. Contentment for me is like this. <clears throat> when you look beyond where you are and you look at you, if you look at yourself for who you really are, the weaknesses and the strengths. When you look at your life right now, you say, yo, I'm not even ready for that next stage. If you're a single person, if you analyze and self-examine yourself thoroughly, you will look at your side of yourself and say, you know what? I'm really not ready for marriage. Let me be content where I'm at. It's crazy. Single people looking at married people being jealous. Married people looking at single people being jealous. But nobody's content where they are. My thoughts on contentment is, is trusting God completely. Trusting God in the stage where you at right now. Telling yourself, look, God, I trust where you plant me. Contentment says, God, I'm not going to budge beyond where my, I'm not going to budge beyond my development. I'm not going to budge beyond my level of preparation. Lord, I will be wherever I'm at right now until I'm ready. And people say, God, I'm ready. The fact that you task, the fact that you told God or telling God that you're ready is evidence that you're not ready. You have to be proven in the stage of readiness before you walk into the next level. You have to be proven that you're ready. Look, just because you say I do, just because people say I do don't mean they're ready for marriage. Just because people say, you know, I love you don't mean they're ready for love. Love is a commitment. Before you can be committed to something beyond where you are, you got to be content and faithful where you are. Faithfulness says I'm faithful and I have evidence and I have fruit that proves that I'm ready for the next level. Just speaking doesn't mean you're faithful. Actions speak louder than words. Just because you're saying, you know, God, I'm ready for my husband. I'm ready for my wife. I'm ready for a million dollars. And God said, why am I going to give you a million dollars if you can't balance a dollar? Why am I going to give you a husband if you can't take care of yourself? Why am I going to give you a wife if you can't take care of yourself? Take care of you. Steward your stage where you at well. Steward where you are now. And watch God open the doors. Success happens when preparation meets opportunity. The reason why opportunity is not knocking at your door because God sees that you're not ready. Yeah, people get married for the wrong reasons, man. Marriage is not for sprinters. Marriage is a marathon. It's those who can endure to the end. People think they can just sprint into marriage because they can get some, some sex, you know, to get some companionship. Nah, man, you got to be ready for the long haul. Marriage is about ups and downs. I heard a preacher say, you got to fall in and out of love with the same person. That's what marriage is. Marriage is about forgiving. Marriage is looking at two imperfect people trusting in a God to sustain. A, marriage is a three-core thing. It don't matter if it's you and another person. If God not in the midst of it, it will not last. The divorce rate is high for a reason because people have removed God from their marriage. Yeah, go ahead and post on Facebook. Marriage is a ministry. It is. Man, you are a representation of Christ in the church, man. You got to represent him well. You know? Any other questions? Thank y'all for the hearts, man. Keep them coming. I got some time, man. I don't got to work tomorrow. I'm off tomorrow. Any questions for me, man? Any questions? Are oh, you welcome? No problem. Hope that answered your question. Thank y'all for those hearts, man. Y'all got this. Y'all let me know the love is real, man. And if you're watching this on YouTube, definitely follow me on Periscope. All those people's on Periscope right now, go ahead and follow me on YouTube, Facebook. Go to my website, IamUnplugged.com. Any other questions? Don't worry, man. God is able. I believe that God wants me to relocate to a location. How can I be sure I'm hearing from him correctly? <clears throat> Okay, I believe that God wants me to relocate to another location. Okay, um, God, let me let me think about this. I want to make sure I give my words correctly. Um, people used to ask, you know, uh, how does God speak? Um, oftentimes, God whispers so that you can be close enough to hear. No, close enough to Him, they let hear Him. When it comes to making sure you know God is speaking, because there's three voices in your head. There's your voice, there's, there's demonic voice, and then there's God's voice. Many people confuse God's voice with their voice. The greatest, the greatest, um, how can I put this? The biggest lie that people say, or the biggest, the phrase that begins the biggest lie is God told me or God said. 
More people lie on God than they lie on anybody else. People say, God, God told, told me to leave this. God told me to come to this. God told me to marry you. God told me to go to this city. No, before you say God say anything, you got to seek him. And I promise you, God will confirm everything he says to you. God will confirm it. God will confirm it through a donkey. God will confirm it through a rock. He will confirm it to any way he knows that will bring you peace. If you don't, if you still feel restless, keep seeking. When God speaks, there's an overwhelming peace. And there's enough confirmation that follows what he says that lets you know this is God. Listen, if you're the only one saying it and God ain't bringing a ram in a bush and God ain't bringing no random person to tell you, God will bring enough that will keep your faith sustained. Because I don't think we've gotten to a place where we say, God, I know you said it. When you know God says something, you stable in it. You don't question it because you know when God speaks. So to answer your question, if you feel like God wants you to relocate to another city, if you feel that's what he's saying, give yourself a week. <clears throat> Get off social media. Don't tell nobody you're moving. You know, just kind of be to yourself. Seek God. Believe, tell God, I believe that I receive an answer from you. Go before him boldly. You know, pray and worship him and just make room for him to make himself sure to you. Once you do that, watch God begin to confirm. And if you feel that God has confirmed, start walking into that direction. Because if God closed the door, see, no man, no devil, no person can close the door that God opens for you. So what I'm trying to say is if you walk towards where he has been confirming, God will make your path straight. The blessing of the Lord adds no sorrow. If it's sorrowful, if it's depressing, if it's taking too much work, if it's not easy, I'm not saying it's going to be perfect, but if it's not smooth, if it's not a smooth transition in peace, then I wouldn't relocate. I'll stay still until he speaks. I'll stand still until he confirms it through the mouth of two or three widows. Everywhere be established. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. You don't want to move ahead of God. You don't want to be behind him. You don't want to be ahead of him. You want to be right there with him. Any other questions, man? I got me on a on a rhythm, man. I'm feeling good right now. <clears throat> I wish I had a Gatorade, though. <laughs> I'm tired, man. Hope that helped, man. Because you don't want to go nowhere that God's not leading you. Any other questions, man? I'm off tomorrow. I got some time. I'm going to be posting this on YouTube. I want, I want you guys to send me your questions in, man. Yeah, I'm tired, girl. Man. I'm tired. Your boy's tired, man. I got a long day tomorrow. I'm getting this unplugged ready, man. I'm ready to take this city, man. Take this country back for the Lord, man. <laughs> but I need your help, man. I want you guys to continue to pray for me, man. It's not easy, man. But it's worth it, because y'all are worth it. Any other questions? <clears throat> Ask me anything, man. Real talk, man. Ask me anything. Take the world, saints. Yeah, we got to take it, man. The most powerful person on the planet is not Obama. The most powerful person is not an elite person in the Illuminati, wherever you want to call it. The most powerful person is the one who can connect to heaven. The most powerful person is the person who knows God. I know I wish you can attend too, man. We're going to be periscoping, videotaping it. I mean, I wish you can come too, man. Shoot, we would love to bring Unplugged to you. What city are you from? You connect to a church, a college? We'll love to come. We'll love to come over there, man. Hey, what city y'all from? What city y'all from? We would love to bring Unplugged to your city, to your college, wherever. Atlanta? Yeah, I want to come to Atlanta, man. I'm up the street. Detroit? Okay. I want to come to Detroit too, man. Jackson, Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah, I want to come down there too. Norfolk, uh, uh, Virginia. Y'all the street too, man. Y'all, y'all bring me out, man. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna break your pockets. <laughs> you guys want to go international? Yeah, man, want to go international, man. I'm Nigerian, man. I mean, I unplug is watched more, more in Sweden, Germany, Australia, the Netherlands, New Zealand. And Ghana. Albany, Georgia. Yeah, Victor Tabernacle, bring me on down, man. New York, New Jersey. Yeah, I would love, I'm telling you, man. Unplug's an international thing. That's why I took Charlotte off the website, man. I put Unplug because Unplug's worldwide, man. Matt. Where's Matt? Massachusetts? Oh, Norfolk, Massachusetts. <laughs> Are you Nigerian too? That's what's up. Philly. Philly in the building. What's up, man? Yeah, man, I want to I be able to see you guys. I want to be able to pour my heart, man, and 
and get you guys on fire for God, man, because I'm my philosophy is revival or bust. When Unplugged comes back out, it's revival or bust, man. Look, listen, man, I'm God. I want to be so revived that I spark a flame in this city, in this in this country, man. Randy, Will, will Ishmael and Megan get married? <laughs> I don't even know when they get married, boy. Everybody get Unplugged getting married, yo. Grenada, Grenada, Grenada. Yeah, I'd love to come down there. Yeah, I'm excited for them too. All right, y'all. Y'all ain't asking me no questions, man. I guess I got to go. I hope this message encouraged y'all, man. I hope this, you know, this time that I spent with you guys was beneficial to you. If you're watching this again, man, keep them hearts coming, man. Give me about two, three thousand, four thousand more of those hearts. Keep sharing, man. Share the replay button. I love you guys. If y'all don't have any more questions, I'm about to ride out. They call me Durango Josh and, and uh, hit my job because I got this Durango. Man, I love this car, man. God's good. Durango Josh. Or Josh Durango. I don't know, David. Whatever you're saying. All right, guys. Is that it? No questions? Got my name tag. The YMCA in the building. All right, guys. There's no more questions. I'm going to go ahead and head on out. Because I see people joining in. I just kind of want to make sure I give everybody the opportunity to ask me whatever question they have on their heart. Don't worry, man. Don't offend God with your worry. Make him feel special with your trust. Trust him in everything in your life. Don't, don't let worry grip you. Listen, man, I know you're going through some tough times, y'all. I ain't even trying to act like life ain't tough. But God is tougher. And he sent Christ to comfort him, man. Will you still be doing the Q&A session on the next chapter of your life? Yeah, I'm going to be doing Q&A every week. And I'm going to be doing a lot of Q&A on Periscope, man. So Facebook me, email me, or however you can get to me your questions. And I'll answer them through Periscope. All right, guys, man, I got to go get me a vitamin water, a Gatorade. Put on a good message on YouTube. Sit back, relax. And get ready for the next chapter of this life. I love you guys. Until next time, stay unplugged.